Hello, I'm Efren Zimbalist Jr. A number of years ago, I starred in The Chapman Report, a film about the sex studies of Dr. Alfred Kinsey. Like most Americans, I felt at the time that Dr. Kinsey's work was groundbreaking, and it was. But since then, serious questions have been raised about the Kinsey research methods, serious enough to warrant a closer look. What would you think if you learned that some of the most important scientific research of the century may have been based on fraud? Or if not fraud, criminal experimentation on children funded by the taxpayer? What if you learned that the results of this research are exerting a profound influence on our society today, ranging from how we deal with sex offenders to how, when, and what our children are being taught about sex? Not to mention why. Every parent in America needs to know the facts behind Alfred Kinsey's inclusion of children in his famous sex studies in the late 1940s. Recent revelations about government-sponsored radiation experiments remind us once more of the dangers of projects that violate informed consent and the standards of common decency. As you watch this story unfold, you will learn how America has unknowingly put its children at risk in the name of science. And you may also join me in asking, what happened to Dr. Kinsey's smaller subjects? Where are the children of Table 34? Children, our most precious gift and our hope for the future. Once upon a time, children were free to roam their neighborhoods without worry. Parents could count on the good intentions of neighbors, school officials, and other adults to keep their children safe. But in recent years, parents have had to take special measures to ensure that their children not come to harm. Their fears are not unfounded. Many children have fallen victim to sexual abuse. How do we go from a safe, caring environment for children to one in which parents are terrified that their children are at risk in just a few short years? Part of the answer may be found in Indiana at the world-famous Kinsey Institute. In 1948, a zoologist named Alfred C. Kinsey shocked the world with his pioneering study, Sexual Behavior in the Human Male. Although many scientists were critical of Kinsey's methods, the media popularized Kinsey's findings about sex. By 1981, Dr. Judith Reisman uncovered the role of child sexual abuse in the Kinsey studies in a paper presented to the Fifth World Congress of Sexology in Jerusalem. She documented Kinsey's reliance on the systematic molestation of more than 300 infants and children from two months old to 15 years of age. Graph tables depicting sexual activity in children use identical criteria as those in the tables on adult subjects. Then I went back and I took a look at the Kinsey Report, Sexual Behavior in the Human Male. And as I reviewed the tables, uh, it, it struck me as clear as day. I, I, how, could, how could they get this data? Where, where would they get these data? Uh, how did they know that a two-month-old baby did or did not have an orgasm? Um, how did they get a record of 26 orgasms in 24 hours for a four-year-old? A, a four-year-old. If these experiments took place, they involved acts to which no child could provide consent and for which no parent or guardian could provide consent on behalf of the child. Therefore, we're talking about criminal activity, the criminal sexual abuse of children. Research scientist Gordon Muir sees broad ramifications from Kinsey's work. According to Dr. Muir, who helped edit and publish Judith Reisman's and Ed Eichel's 1990 book, Kinsey's Sex and Fraud, children as young as two months of age are featured in tables. In some cases, 188 children in one table. And the legend beneath the table says, timed with a second hand or stopwatch. The understanding that we have of childhood sexuality and normal childhood sexual development, as it is believed and taught in academia today, comes from the experimental evidence 
documented in Kinsey's Mail Report published in 1948 with the child sexuality tables that we have just discussed. It is absolutely astonishing that this is taken as the basis for what we understand to be normal childhood sexual development. And when I try and explain this to colleagues in the type of science that I'm involved in, in what I call the harder sciences of biology and medicine, statistics, immunology, they frankly do not believe what I'm trying to tell them. And the only way that I can convince them of the truth of this is to go to the library, pull off the shelf one of Alfred Kinsey's books and show them what in fact is inside. And it is quite shocking. Based on the Kinsey data, sex researchers formulated a theory of child sexuality that's influenced everything from laws against molestation to how and when sex education is taught. Few professionals would disagree that Dr. Kinsey has been the most influential figure in the study of sex, particularly the concept of child sexuality. He did not openly promote pedophilia, but he provided the, quote, scientific, unquote, basis for it. He felt the main problem with adult child sexual relations was hysteria and overreaction on the part of parents and authorities. He believed that young boys needed the help of older people to develop effective sexual techniques. And he recorded that adult sexual contacts with young girls are a source of pleasure to these girls and may lead to better socio-sexual development in their later lives. His co-author Wardell Pomeroy, a prominent sexologist, has written that the Kinsey research uncovered, quote, many beautiful and mutually satisfying relationships between fathers and daughters. Pomeroy also in his sex education book, Boys and Sex, refers to the possibility of, quote, loving sexual relationships, unquote, between children and animals. Children have been increasingly portrayed sexually in major pornographic magazines. In our study conducted for the U.S. Justice Department, uh, particularly juvenile justice and delinquency prevention. Uh, we, we came up with some pretty surprising findings on the images of children uh, in Playboy and Penthouse and Hustler. In particular, Playboy and Penthouse was surprising to us. Uh, we were instructed to do the research because of the finding of these kinds of materials being used in sexual activities, sexual crimes really against children. Most disturbing was that 29% of the visuals, that is, the photographs, included some sort of nude or genital display. Very, very surprising. 21% uh, were visually exposed and sexualized. 20% um, had some sort of genital activity taking place of some type. 10% uh, involved force, 10% killing or murder. Before Kinsey, psychologists had rejected the idea of children as sexually viable until the age of puberty. Earlier this century, Sigmund Freud paved the way for Kinsey by asserting that children were sexual, but that their sexuality was latent, that is, not acted upon until puberty. Kinsey's report radically altered this perception, spawning an entire industry based on the notion that children have a right to sexual relations at any age. The Kinsey perception of the right of children to have sex at any age has resulted in challenges to laws protecting children from sexual exploitation. In Florida recently, a state court judge threw out several cases that have been brought under the statutory rape laws. Citing privacy grounds, the judge found that minors under the age of 16 had a constitutional right to engage in sexual activity. Several courts have recently held that parents do not have a right to stop school districts from handing out condoms to their children. Again, you, you see in school districts and courts and the media, the, the Kinsey philosophy that children should be free and autonomous to decide for themselves what sort of sexual activity, what sort of sexual behavior they should engage in without any kind of regulation or restriction from the state or their parents has begun to chip away at, at the protections that our legal system had previously provided to, to children. Some scientists feel that an inquiry of the Kinsey Institute is long overdue. I have been in contact with perhaps the best known fraud specialist in this country uh, over a period of years concerning this Kinsey uh, research fraud allegation. The person I'm referring to, of course, is Walter Stewart, who is well known in Congress and in the scientific community for his work in the Baltimore case particularly 
and in other cases. Now, Stewart is firmly of the opinion that there is something here that needs to be investigated and has told me so many times. Muir says that such an effort may be mounted outside the United States and cites a letter by Walter Stewart to the Canadian Medical Journal. What Stewart said was that he finds the evidence, that is, for fraud and ethical violations in research, compelling. Since the evidence comes almost entirely from Kinsey's book itself, he says, I find it disturbing and believe it requires investigation. Dr. Muir says he hopes that Congress will investigate the Kinsey Institute once it's widely known that children may have been used in sexual experimentation. Because there is a mess here that has to be cleared up in the backyard of American science, and it would indeed be tragic if it gets cleared up from elsewhere first. Important questions need to be answered. Where are the children today? How were they procured for the experiments? Did their parents know they were being used in sessions with avowed pedophiles? Where are the children of Table 34? I'm concerned about these people who must now be in their 50s, that they must have had some very difficult experiences following these experiments, and it would be good, really, if they could be contacted even for therapeutic purposes at this stage. I often wonder if they'll come forward when we're speaking in lectures or speaking on radio or whatever it may be. I've been waiting to hear for some of these people to remember the experience and to come forward and say, yes, I was one of those. Based on 12,000 interviews, empirical observation, and Kinsey's own ideas about sexuality, the Kinsey Report, as it came to be known, had enormous cultural and scientific impact. You could use the findings from the survey to counter the moral judgments of other people. And that's really the importance of Kinsey. As Kinsey moves the argument away from the old kind of sterile debate about morality, which, for which there is no solution, to a place where people can start talking about sexuality as in a different kind of way, looking to different kind of standards. Kinsey concluded that Americans' sex lives were far more varied than had been thought, and that children were sexual from birth. But the Kinsey books have serious flaws, as has been noted by the National Research Council and Dr. Abraham Maslow, who warned Kinsey that sex surveys tend to skew the data toward the sexually promiscuous and unconventional. Because sexual manipulation of children is illegal, the Kinsey studies have served as virtually the sole source for sex researchers. The Kinsey findings about children are based on interviews with and records kept by pedophiles, which he described as adult males who've had sexual contacts with younger boys and who, with their adult backgrounds, are able to recognize and interpret the boys' experiences. Uh, as a practitioner, a psychologist, I cannot see that this is the way, the way in which we collect information about normal childhood sexuality. To get pedophiles to go out and do experiments on children is not how we learn about normality. Kinsey acknowledges that some of the experiments involve the use of physical force with unwilling participants. Kinsey describes what he terms orgasms by the children, a gradual and sometimes prolonged buildup to orgasm, which involves still more violent convulsions of the whole body, heavy breathing, groaning, sobbing, or more violent cries, sometimes with an abundance of tears, especially among young children. Some of the children exhibited extreme trembling, collapse, loss of color, and sometimes fainting. The males in the present group will fight away from the partner and may make violent attempts to avoid climax, although they derive definite pleasure from the situation. A fretful babe quiets down under the initial sexual stimulation, is distracted from other activities, begins rhythmic pelvic thrust, becomes tense as climax approaches, is thrown into convulsive action, often with violent arm and leg movements, sometimes with weeping at the moment of climax. According to Paul Gebhard, a Kinsey Report co-author and former president of the Kinsey Institute, the researchers were aware that the experiments were illegal. We've always insisted on maintaining confidentiality 
even at the cost of thereby becoming immoral at best and criminal at worst, said Gebhardt. An example of criminality is our refusal to cooperate with authorities in apprehending a pedophile we had interviewed who is being sought for a sex murder. Kinsey would have done business with the devil if it helped the research, and this is true. He, the research was absolutely paramount. And uh, he was a student enough to stay out of trouble. He, never, he got in practically no trouble, but uh, uh, he worked at it. Related to that, of course, is the question is, did parents give consent to what was being done? And nobody has indicated to the, us that consent was given. Indeed, these co-workers seem to indicate to us that consent was not given and they didn't really see it as terribly important because this wasn't going to be particularly harmful to the children anyway. There is another possibility regarding Kinsey's data on children, that the experiments never took place. We have the other serious implication that the data are being used as if they were real in order to generate a whole view of child sexuality and availability of children in sexual encounters which is based on nothing. If that is so, then scientific fraud may have occurred. In either case, the reliance on reports of sexual torture of children under the auspices of federally supported research cries out for examination, especially since Kinsey's research had such a profound effect on the entire sex research field. I went back to get a degree and went into the human sexuality program at New York University. And it was when I was in that program that I began to learn and see the indoctrination of what has been called the Kinsey Grand Scheme. Now that term comes from Mordell Pomeroy, Kinsey's closest associate. But I experienced it firsthand in an international health seminar held in Holland, organized by my professor, Dr. Derek Calderwood. Calderwood initiated nude body workshops in which he would give quasi-medical excuses for men to touch each other's genitals and for women to interact uh, in different uh, feely touchy situations. The Kinsey Institute has dominated the world of sexology through the migration of Kinsey disciples to several key centers of sexology, including New York University, the University of Pennsylvania, and the Institute for the Advanced Study of Human Sexuality in San Francisco. These three institutions account for the lion's share of the academic credentialing of sex educators in the United States. Working with the Kinsey team was Dr. Mary Calderon, who was medical director of the Planned Parenthood Federation of America from 1953 to 1964, before co-founding the Sex Information and Education Council of the United States, better known as SECUS. She formed that organization with Lester Kirkendall, another pioneering sexologist who was the teacher and the mentor of Derek Calderwood, my professor. Also involved was Kinsey's co-author, Wardell Pomeroy, a founding member who also served as president of SECUS as recently as 1975. In terms of Lester Kirkendall, in 1985, he made a statement in an article entitled Sex Education in the Future that I think is worth noting. He says that programs of the future will probe sexual expression with same-sex partners, and even across generational lines. With a diminished sense of guilt, these patterns will become legitimate. And the emphasis on normality and abnormality will be much diminished with these future trends. The most obvious impact of this effort is to demystify the taboos of sexuality in sex education classes to very young children. Many sex education curricula now begin in kindergarten and can continue through high school, often under AIDS prevention. The message to parents, if we don't begin teaching children about safe sex as early as possible, including every variation, then they may get AIDS. This is Smith or Ms. Smith from, from uh, um, somewhere in Ohio who goes for her three unit training in human sexuality because she has to teach human sexuality to the kids and she has to teach AIDS prevention. She goes to um, an accredited sex educator 
and she will be trained in the Kinsey model. That is the only model that she can be trained in. And as a result, then, she has to set aside whatever value structure, whatever moral structure she's been carrying all these years, because she's been told that the science has proven that children are sexual from birth, that children have orgasmic potential from birth, that this, therefore, can be perfectly fine. How can you be protected from AIDS, like when you're having sex? Well, one of the best ways, Magic, is, is wear a condom, isn't yeah. it? Yes, this, um, the safest way is to wear a condom. As a result, some schools and even a documentary presented by Nickelodeon are instructing children as young as eight years old in how to use a condom. You roll it down the penis, and that protects the man when his penis is inside the woman's vagina. Children are also told how to perform anal sex. At a safe sex youth conference in New York in 1994, children as young as 12 were given graphic brochures advising boys to enjoy safe sex with men and encouraging girls to experiment with lesbian sex practices that could cause sterility. Nowhere in the program curriculum that was developed to be the guidelines for future sex education was there anything that suggested sick sexual behavior, any form sexual activity such that might be categorized or abnormality. The Kinsey view of child sexuality has also been promulgated by Dr. John Money, perhaps the most prominent sex researcher in America. A founding board member of CECAS, Dr. Money has written numerous books as well as hundreds of papers, reviews, and textbook chapters on the subject of sex. In 1990, Dr. June Reinisch dedicated her book, The Kinsey Institute New Report on Sex, to Dr. Money, whom she describes as one of my mentors. Recently, Dr. Money was interviewed by Pydeca, the journal of pedophilia, which is published in the Netherlands. The journal argues for man-boy sex and contains advertisements for the North American Man-Boy Love Association and other pro-pedophile groups. Kinsey Institute associate Dr. Vern Bulow is on Pydeca's editorial board, which issued this statement of purpose. The starting point of Pydeca is necessarily our consciousness of ourselves as pedophiles. But when you look at the journal Pydeca, the Dutch journal, you will see that on the board of directors you have people like Vern Bulow. Vern Bulow was the president of the Society for the Scientific Study of Sex when they formed the accrediting committee for future university uh, programs that give degrees to sex educators. Uh, Vern Bulow did the foreword for Edward Brangersma's two volumes, Loving Boys. John Money of Johns Hopkins Hospital and the mentor of June Reinisch was interviewed in Pedica. And of course, he's one of the people saying that uh, Sex with children can be an enriching experience and doesn't harm the child. In Dr. Money's interview in Pydeca, he was asked about child sexuality. His reply, if I were to see the case of a boy aged 10 or 12 who's intensely attracted toward a man in his 20s or 30s, if the relationship is totally mutual and the bonding is genuinely totally mutual, then I would not call it pathological in any way. This attitude mirrors that of Dr. Kinsey, who once wrote that, it is difficult to understand why a child, except for its cultural conditioning, should be disturbed at having its genitalia touched. In 1965, the Kinsey team published the book Sex Offenders, which argued that sexual behavior was so varied that certain activities should not be singled out for harsh punishment. During the past 10 years, reports of child abuse cases have soared to more than two and a half million annually. Although many of these cases have proved to be false reports, it is clear that child abuse and the perception of child abuse is a growing problem. Increasingly, child abuse experts are expressing concern about Kinsey's impact on the way people view sexuality. One of the objectives of Kinsey-type programming uh, is to change the concept of the family. And if you think about it, if Heather has two mommies and Daddy has a male roommate, in a way, you're denormalizing the heterosexual nuclear family. And if you remember 
from the uh, pedophile type statements uh, in the writings, for example, of Theo Sanford, he said that if children could be weaned away from the nuclear family, they could then form emotional attachments with others beyond the family. So in a sense, the systematic destruction of the concept of a family with the mother and father and with the family breakups and divorces that are occurring, it's a very opportune time. Attempts to uncover evidence regarding the experiments on children had been rebuffed by the Kinsey Institute. Former director Dr. June Reinisch, interim director Dr. Stephanie Sanders, and other Kinsey personnel either declined or did not respond to interview requests. Dr. Money also declined to be interviewed. Child Magazine featured an article by Dr. Reinisch urging parents to regard their children as sexually active and to promote more sexual activity. Given its critical role in overhauling a culture that used to value and protect children above all else, the Kinsey Report is long overdue for scientific scrutiny. He used data from the rape of children, as we've discussed, some as young as two months, to demonstrate and prove childhood sexual capacity. He concealed the full nature of these experiments, and he concealed information on who performed these experiments. He extrapolated these data to describe normal childhood development. He did not follow up these abused children as was ethically and morally required. Though the identities of many of these children are known and known today, and they still could be followed up and should be. Furthermore, he shielded criminals who were involved in this work, including one murderer that we know of from the police. If I have not said enough about the need for this research to be investigated, then I doubt if there's really anything else that could be said. These questions need to be answered. How were the children procured for the experiments recorded in Table 34? Where are they now? Most would be in their 50s. Also, many of the Kinsey associates themselves are still around, but most of them are elderly. It's important that they be given the opportunity to shed light on what happened before it's too late, before any more children are victimized. Our big, one of our big problems, of course, is the way in which the Kinsey model of sexual education has gone from the university level that is being taught at the university level through the Kinsey people, through, for teachers and so forth, from the university to the college, from the college to the junior college, from the junior college then to the high school. As our teachers have become trained quote unquote, in the field of human sexuality, they then train those below them who train those below them. That then filtered out. So we began in 1953, really. 1948 was Kinsey's book on men. 1953, women. We began to train people at that university level with all of this false data, all the fraudulent data. That then filters down to junior high, I mean to high school, to junior high school. And now we've got this thing spreading out so that we have teachers and we have parents in an uproar all over the United States of America being forced indeed to teach things that we are arguing uh, are, are fundamentally fraudulent. And fraudulent means that you'll get bad results. You get bad results when you have bad data.